If you can do that effectively for all of your leads, game over. You have to define where they are today and you have to show them what becomes possible because if we go back to it, mm -hmm. certainty and belief. We said those are the two things that will ultimately convert. How do you do that in your nurture? If you can do that effectively for all of your leads, game over. A silly, probably not super effective example of what would be a nurture framework. Just to give an example of what mm -hmm. a framework is, let's say I have an email list and yep. let's say there's 500 people on there and if I send out an email, let's say 20% of them open it, which is really good, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, so 20% really open. Once a week, I send out a newsletter. Yep. And in that newsletter, fitness tips, favorite exercise uh, of the week, food, uh, a, recipe. A, a recipe, right? And let's say once a month, I put out uh, that I coach someone for free or do a free, but you can tune in so you can come over here, but that's offered every month. And then maybe something else. In essence, what you're saying is you have systems mm -hmm. on this nurturing framework. Yep. And so people can start to rely on the fact that you're building value. And here's the other thing, you build authority this way. Yep. Like if they hear you once a week, twice a week, every single week for five months, and at some point they're like, Jason knows his shit. And well, then it's, it's as easy as being like, by the way, I have a spot open for coaching. Boom, I want that right away. Yeah, so that, that way works. Now take what you said and put it on steroids. Instead of once a week, oh, by the way, the next five days, I'm gonna teach you a very specific outcome. Let's say we're talking about fat loss. I'm gonna teach you how to lose 10 pounds this week. The five steps that all of my clients use, right? That you're probably not using the five steps that you need. Day one, give them step one, give them an implementation standpoint, have them come back day two. The people that are still there on day five that are following the advice, oh, yeah. they are super hot leads. You've given them five days of value, You've effectively given them the gold. And now you're saying, hey, look great, you lost 10 pounds. It's probably not the first time in your life that you lost 10 pounds. You actually wanna keep it off and keep going. We should probably work together. Mm. But you've given them reason to believe in you. It's no longer hype, it's no longer conjecture, it's tangible. They can touch it, they can feel it. They've experienced it for five days. You're literally building a, a digital version of the normal in-person sales cycle. I used to do this spiel with my trainers where I say, you know the difference between a good closer and a great closer is this. A good closer can push anybody into the sale. A great closer can pull somebody into a sale. Mm. And so, and what I tell them is like, when you're in your presentation and that with afterwards they come to me and be like, Adam, I didn't sell or whatever. And I said, well, you know, at what point did they ask you about how much training is? Well, never. I just got the binder out at the end because it was the end and I did. I said, well, there's your mistake right there. Yep. You did not build enough value to get them to even ask you that they want. And then you try and sell them. The likelihood you're going to close that deal is very, even some of the best closers aren't going to close that deal. So somewhere in your presentation or the value that you're providing is where the miss is at. It's not in your sales closing skills or the sales presentation. It's that you haven't done a good enough job of building so much value in yourself that these people are such hot leads. They're, well, they want to know, well, how much, Jay? You've already helped me out so much. Like, yeah. what's it going to cost for me to be a client of yours? That's Dude, what you're searching. That's such a good segue because Ultimately, what nurture is about is three things. Is one, you need to make sure that your clients start in the pain that they're currently in, right? Your prospects are, they need to recognize the pain they're currently in of not having the results they desire. Two, you need to showcase the possibility of what they can achieve working with you. And ultimately, if you've nurtured them right, the offer presentation and the sales conversation is about them inquiring about your path your unique opportunity, your offer, right? It is an inquiry into that path. It's not you presenting the path. Mm -hmm. So you start them in pain, you showcase possibility. So the, the whole point of the nurture is you wanna lose 10 pounds. Well, you're in pain, you need to lose weight, right? The possibility is I'm gonna show you over the course of five days how to lose 10 pounds. At the end of five mm -hmm. days, you've successfully mm -hmm. lost some weight. I've shown you possibility in your life. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to ask me, how do we keep this going? If you ask me that, I've now got you. And this transition to the next phase of all this, which is sales right? And everybody thinks they suck at sales. I've got two very strong beliefs on sales. One, people in attach entirely too much to the outcome. Like they think that the whole point of a sales conversation is to sell. I don't believe sales is about selling at all. And I think that if you go into a sales conversation and you're trying to sell your shit, you suck. You already lost. You're you're gonna lose. Selling is not telling. No, it, and that's such a good line. I've never heard that. It's but, a effective communication. Sal says it all the time on the show. That's exactly all it is. It's just being able to communicate your points. That's all it is. My whole goal in a sales conversation is to make sure that you feel, and, and and confirm. I think is a better word is to confirm that you feel inadequate with your current abilities to achieve what you actually desire.